Well, hey guys, and welcome to Hey, It's a Good Life. I'm so glad you're here because today I have some really cool things to show you. We've got all sorts of things growing out here. So earlier this week, I showed you a little update on the garden. I just want you to see how much the squash has grown. Our San Marzano tomatoes are coming in. The Kajari melon is really growing so fast. Check out this squash. I mean, things are just growing so quickly, which is such a huge encouragement to me, especially after flopping with my soil so hard last year and just like losing everything I planted to my learning curve. <coughs> Failure. <coughs> I've got more corn and more squash over here. Check out my sunflower tree. I mean, it's just a sunflower, but he's gonna be so tall and he's in such an awkward spot. I just, I'm calling him my sunflower tree because he's just so special. Um, also, we've got some things competing for space already, like these watermelon versus the zinnia. Yeah, we've got some things popping here. The cats have been trying to eat the corn and what I've come to realize is that they're trying to tell me something. They're trying to say that they prefer heirloom seeds. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally kidding. I think that what they're trying to say is that they prefer tall grass and what I planted for them is not exactly tall grass because the way I planted it was so close together. But I think there might be something to the whole quality of the seed. I don't think what I bought was like organic wild bird seed, which maybe means it's been genetically modified. I don't know, but maybe I need to buy them some like higher quality seed. Maybe that will have them more interested in their own grass versus my corn. I mean, I plant them a whole field of their own grass on either side of the pollinator garden, but no, no, they want the corn. Oh, but look at this little angel, right? As I'm saying that, good job, bear. Eating the grass I planted you. <laughs> He's like, listen, homie, this is not the same thing as the GMO grass out front or the corn that you planted in the garden. Why? I thought that they loved this grass. I like hand selected it, sifted it just for them. Oh, Lord have mercy on my soul. These little cats drive me absolutely bonkers and I love them so much. Besides, they're my only farm animals for now. That and the worms, which, oh, by the way, I moved the worms. Let me show you. So I moved the worms earlier because it's getting really hot in the garage and as I'm sure you guys know, really hot heat is not good for worms. They officially have a home in here, at least for the summertime, which is good. I mean, it's easier for putting scraps in there. It's just like a little bit less space in the kitchen and like one more thing to clean around, but you know, it works. Hi, so as you can see, the worms, yes, are still alive. They're still with us. Tommy was asking me, oh, the worms are still alive? Like, you're still doing that? And I'm like, um, yes, hello. I'm a worm farmer. These are my farm animals. This is all I got for right now. I gotta take care of them. I'm very thankful you guys can understand my humor. But now, let me show you what I'm really excited about. Guys, we have monarchs. Oliver, Oliver, get out of my corn. Get out, get out. Don't eat my corn. I don't even know if that's good for you. What if you're like allergic to it or something? <sighs> okay, back to what I was saying. We have monarchs. <laughs> Guys, we have monarchs growing beautifully. Oliver, okay, that's it. You're going inside. Not, I cannot even deal with you right now. Bye, there you go. I came out here this morning and I had one that was like freshly, freshly hatched, like so tiny, like the size of a pinhead, if that. And then I have one that's maybe like, maybe in star two, maybe in star three. Um, but yeah, check it out. Isn't that cool? I'm super, super pumped to have monarchs out here and to be on the milkweed that I worked so hard to keep alive is like so rewarding. You know what I find so interesting? Like I'm sure many of you do. I love that God is so good and he sends these little signs of encouragement. For me, having these monarchs and having these plants grow is such a sign of encouragement and gives me so much hope. Uh, but specifically with these monarchs, I just feel like it's such a symbol of where I'm at 
with this move to San Diego and just rebuilding a life, having like a little flare up of this old injury and kind of being brought back to just a place of having so much gratitude for my mobility and like just dreaming, just dreaming so big of like what's next and just wanting to help so many people and wanting to serve so many people and to just like be the best version of myself. Like I just have these really big dreams. And if I'm honest, this has just been a really challenging time of kind of like rediscovering who I am. Who am I if I'm not working at the school garden? Who am I if I don't have this practice in my hometown? Like, you know, we strip away these things that we do. And sometimes it's really hard to embrace that when you really want to be successful in this new area of your life. And sometimes God just says, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna strip down these layers. We're gonna work on some stuff. I love you. Like, let me in there with you and, and let's be in this together. Monarchs specifically always remind me of my dad. So having them in my garden is like such, such a reminder and such a joy to have them. They help me still feel connected to him in a way. But what blows my mind about butterflies eat and eat and eat and eat, and then they rest, they turn into total goo, and then they transform into something beautiful. And in some senses, I feel like that's what I've been doing. I think there's an invitation to us in seasons of transition to pour into ourselves, to care for ourselves, to feed our soul, and to wait on that transformation, to, to embrace not being a butterfly yet, to embrace fully transforming into total goo and, and just inviting God into the mess. And then with time and with patience, transform into something wonderful. And that's what I'm holding on to. I'm holding on to this little message of the butterfly that it's all good. There is purpose in every season and he's got me right where he wants me and he's going to heal me and open up the doors right when they're supposed to be open to, you know, whatever's next. Being a dreamer, I've always got my eyes on the horizon. What's next? What's next? What's next? What are we working towards? And so this has been a huge learning lesson for me to be present, to allow myself to just soak in goodness and to be with God and to like, really let him in to my mess and to really let him love me well there and really cool things happen when we do that and so i'd encourage you if you're in a season of transition or perhaps you're eager to jump into some dream don't jump into that dream without doing the work of feasting on goodness and feasting on soul filling things we need those things before we launch well we need those things before we break out of the mold and spread our wings so been a really huge encouragement to me to see these monarchs on these leaves that is all the time we have together today because the husband is calling me in. uh we're actually hanging out with another local couple tonight so yay for building a new life and leaning into that uh so anyway i'm gonna go great to be with you guys thanks so much for hanging out with me today and i'll see you guys in the next one mm -hmm.